Hi, my name is Maria Considine King, and I'm the Director of Practice Management at Commonwealth Financial Network. I'm joined by Simon Heslop, who's the Director of Asset Management at Commonwealth. Simon, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Maria. What a difference a month makes, Simon. What happened in September? Well, it was a challenging September for investors, and it was a challenging third quarter as well. It was hard to find an asset class that moved higher over the quarter. In fact, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost over 15%, and the S&P 500 was down by almost 14%. And that leaves both indices, as at the end of the third quarter, down by almost 10%. One of the few bright spots was in the Treasury market, and particularly in the longer-dated Treasuries, as interest rates moved sharply lower. We see the long government treasury index up almost 25% for the quarter, which is a substantially large move for a government security. Well, we've heard a lot about the Greek debt situation. I imagine that there's even more that's driving these markets. Well, yes, since March, we've seen heightened volatility in the markets. We see it really as a confluence of four major world events. We've begun with the Arab Spring, or the North African and Middle Eastern countries seeing all the turmoil and a lot of regime change. Secondly, we saw the Japanese earthquake, devastating, followed by the tsunami, which had a substantial impact on global supply. We now have seen the resurgence of the European debt situation, particularly focused around Greece, with markets looking desperately to find a resolution to the Greek debt situation and how they're actually going to be able to repay this debt. And that all seems to be feeding into what is now a slowing U.S. economic recovery and a slowing global recovery. Well, September saw the introduction of Operation Twist by the Fed. What impact do you think the twist will have in the long run? Well, the Fed is definitely looking to stimulate the economy by Operation Twist. So essentially, the Fed is looking to sell shorter maturity instruments and buy longer maturity instruments, longer maturity debt, in order to keep longer term rates lower to help stimulate some borrowing and to help stimulate the economy. But many are skeptical because this is one of several programs the Fed has initiated, and although in the short term they seem to be fairly effective, longer term they really haven't been able to create any sustained demand in the economy. Well, what impact do you think it'll have on interest rates? Well, so far the twist has actually pushed rates on the 10-year and the 30-year substantially lower to historic lows. A typical person can now go out and get a 30-year mortgage for at or below 4% now. But unfortunately, nobody's really borrowing money. People are, are, are holding back, and we're not necessarily creating that demand in the economy that the Fed is looking to. And what should fixed income investors be looking at or considering at this point? Well, it's a very challenging environment for fixed income investors. And by nature, those investors who are on a fixed income and are looking to get yield from their portfolios for income to be able to spend, it's very challenging now that interest rates are, again, at historic lows. And the challenge is not to chase the asset class that has done well previously. As I mentioned, uh, long treasuries are up substantially. But yields on a 30-year are 2.8%. So it's very challenging for investors to get that yield, not to mention the fact that if we should see interest rates move higher to more historically normal levels, it's likely that the prices on these bonds will go down and really hurt these investors. Given the issues in the economy and the market, what would you say to calm investors' fears? I think the most important thing for investors is don't panic. Uh, as you see markets go lower, investors tend to sell more towards the bottoms and buy after markets move higher. And what we've seen is at the end of the third quarter, the first week in the fourth quarter, markets are actually up a little over 3%. So investors that panicked have a tendency to miss these inflection points. What we are seeing is some of our managers are actually looking for this market downturn as opportunities to buy in selected, um, selected asset classes in order to maybe capitalize for future opportunities. And this may also be appropriate for certain investors if you can find opportunity. Thank you, Simon, for joining me today. Thank you, Maria.